Hey, welcome to the Metabolic Motivation Show. My name is Dan O'Byrne, former metabolically challenged business exec turned metabolism master. And each show, we're going to bring you an empowering expert or message to help you unlock your metabolism so you can lose fat, gain muscle, add energy, and look, feel, and perform your best. So thanks for spending some time with us today. Now, let the show begin. What are the biggest challenges that you typically see? You know, it depends on uh, the nature of the infertility, but a lot of people are able to become fertile and have children. Most of the time, I think you're talking about the female, you know, uh, so let's just concentrate on that because it is uh, such a big subject, you know. Sure. And we've had amazing, sure. yeah, it is. And we've had amazing success even when we didn't know that's what the problem was. I'll give you a really quick story. I was working with someone who came to me for more like fibromyalgia, you know, and they had joint pain and muscle pain and they were fatigued all the time. They had headaches, poor sleep, poor memory, all kinds of just chronic stress related disorder. Yes. Now I've been working okay. with this I've been working with this lady and her husband was a great partner, you know, so the three of us had really been working together for about six months. And one day I just I get a phone call and it's uh, hey, it's Betty and uh, we just came to the hospital and I'm pregnant. And I said, well, congratulations, that's fantastic. She goes, no, you don't understand. I was just telling my husband, it's all your fault. You know, you, we have you to thank for this. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, well, we actually gave up trying to get pregnant nine years ago. They had just given up. So, you know, in because she'd been working with me for six months just to turn her body around, just to get healthy. You know, not we weren't working specifically on fertility. She hadn't even mentioned it as a complaint. Sure. And so sure. her body, her body had just turned around and become able to conceive. And of course, then we worked together to make sure that she uh, maintained her pregnancy and gave birth to a wonderful, healthy baby. So, you know, that's an amazing story that just wow. tells you the wow. way I work. That uh, and this has happened over and over and over again now with our work uh, a lot of infertility if it's just related to not being healthy enough to conceive in other words the body doesn't want to conceive it it knows better than we do sometimes sure yeah that's interesting um, there's I'm actually within within my wife's family right now there's there's a number of cases of uh, folks who've come to me and said hey listen I know you know a little bit about nutrition and uh, and and health, and you know we're trying to the thing we've been trying to get pregnant, and we haven't said anything, and uh, and all of them I'm noticing are very stressed out, sort of. Um, and yeah. any, any advice um, on what what advice would you give a, a, a woman who tends to be naturally preoccupied with everyone else's problems? That's a really good question, and of course, uh, you know we. Uh, I always say kind of you can lead a person to water and you can help them or understand how good it tastes, but you can't make them drink, you know. Yeah. And so uh, we basically provide education and then we do some coaching that also helps people transform, maybe overcome some of their own personal barriers. You know, kind of a personal coaching goes along with our nutrition practice. And because we use laboratory work to guide us, the labs themselves speak to us in black and white. Here are the numbers on paper. And so it's no longer just theoretical. You know, it, uh, we have before and afters. Now, I've been doing this since 1998, 99. That's when I started. I came out of the law practice, environmental law. So I know a lot about how bad the environment is and how it affects people's bodies. And uh, But I came out of that field uh, well over 15 years ago and have helped thousands of people because they've taken this research type of approach. I'm not a physician, so I can't treat anything specifically. I can't diagnose and treat. Because I'm not a physician, I was forced to try to find out what was really wrong so it could be right. fixed at a nutritional, right. nutritional and physiological level. And so I don't treat infertility uh, like a specific condition. I'll give you another good example, and uh, this has happened many, many, many times. 
people have said, you know, my main complaint is infertility. I can't conceive and I want to have a baby, which I understand. You know, there's a lot of times there's a sense of urgency to that. And I say, well, listen, I'm not a physician. I don't treat infertility just like I don't treat migraines. I don't treat joint pain. I don't treat anything specifically because that's practicing medicine. Sure. Now, what I do sure. is help. I help identify the healing opportunities, whether it's your hormones or your immune system, your digestive system, the detoxification system, you know, just the way our bodies produce energy or distribute energy and, and all these sort of areas. That's what we look at and that's what we improve. And then we have to be willing to trust that process to give you the results you want or get you closer to those results. So we've had people with all kinds of previous diagnoses just get better. You know, forget the diagnosis. I don't care what a doctor wants to call it, label it, and treat it as such, treating some small specific area. You know, we treat the whole person, and therefore people become fertile. They have healthy babies, or at least that's, you know, the, the goal. And, and so the, um, the issue around infertility is a lot of women and their husbands, of course, are not willing to wait. You know, they just want to get healthy enough to have that baby now. Right. And so very, very often, this is quite, might sound strange, but uh, we ask them to don't try to get pregnant right now. Let's give it six months or nine months or even a year to really get your body healthy, then conceive. So believe it or not, uh, women who have uh, been able, unable to have a baby start working with us. They start moving towards that healthy body that wants and can conceive and we actually have them start using some kind of natural birth control why well because we don't want you getting pregnant right now because that'll screw everything up you know right. uh you know i know right. that's your goal but you know if you all of a sudden get pregnant well that means a different set of circumstances for the ongoing health and repair in other words if you're all of a sudden pregnant we can't really finish our detoxification programs. Right. We can't really finish right. our, our, could be parasite treatment or bacterial overgrowth or yeast infections. And they're much harder to treat in a pregnant person. So we want you to go uh, quite a while, bef you know, really get straightened now before you get uh, that, um, you know, before you start trying to have a baby. So um, it sounds a bit odd, I know, uh, but it's better to wait and really turn yourself around especially if you've been infertile for a period of years, uh, then we know there's some things that really need some time to heal, restore, repair back to the way nature and God intended. And therefore, look, you'll get pregnant and then you'll be able to carry that and we won't have any complications. Yeah, no, that's, it is sort of counterintuitive for a lot of people. But, but if, uh, if we think about the body holistically and uh, the fact that when we're stressed out or, in, in fact, the anxiety of trying to force an outcome is actually uh, going to have a negative effect on a lot of people, would you, would you, would you think that that, uh, that has a, um, the, I guess, taken away, as you were saying, telling them not to, not to worry about it for a while actually – probably has that it has a great psychological effect well you know there's I hear you and you're right uh, there can be a um, uh, you know a mental emotional component that uh, you have to deal with you know so but you have to look at the long term and you know sure you might be able to get pregnant in two or three months um, but do you really want to just yet you know so and if the sense of urgency is overwhelming and the person refuses to do uh, birth control, natural birth control of some sort, well, so be it. That's just the way it works out. I can't, you know, like I say, uh, control what people do. Sure. But, um, you know, we can, we can we certainly advise and, and, and a lot of people take our advice. And then, uh, you know, it all seems to work out in the long run. Um, but, yeah, that's a huge component the, the, that, that – uh, you know, the clock is ticking. I want to have my baby now for, for, you know, and I, I get that I have four kids. So, you know, there's, they're beautiful. Yeah. Hey, let's uh, talk, speaking of the clock of the clock and, and ticking uh, age wise, do you notice much variation? Obviously, you know, obviously as a, as a woman is close, what I see is as women are getting close to 40 uh, here, the average child, um, the average mother first, uh, first birth is late thirties. And it seems to be getting later all the time. Um, 
both uh, both all over Spain. And uh, so, um, do you notice a you know do you notice the, the difference between chronological age and biological age with fertility? Well, yes, yeah, sure, of course. You know, I mean, we uh, w women become able to get pregnant and have kids at 13, 14, sure. 15, you know, sure. and so the, to the, in today's society, we don't see a whole lot of that in, in developed, quote unquote, developed countries and things. Women want uh, to get educations, they want to get careers, you know, and then have their kids when, when they decide to have their kids. And uh, one of the issues around that is that they get so involved in those careers and things uh, that they wait too long, you know, and, and, uh, you know, they come around 40, 45, and now all of a sudden they want to have their first child. And it is more difficult. Um, for one thing, it, no, it shouldn't be more difficult. And if they're very, very healthy, then it should be a natural, wonderful experience. And of course, joy. And so the problem is though, that if they're having fertility issues at 40 or 45 years old, uh, then, what's causing that infertility could be so well ingrained. It, the body chemistry can be so uh, upset. There can be so many ongoing influences um, and disease processes, if you will, that it takes a lot of straightening out. That takes us back to where we started with a lot of women have just given up. and uh, But because they work with us on other problems, other main health complaints, uh, and they're working on that and they're not using birth control, all of a sudden they get pregnant because now the body is responding appropriately to uh, the procreative act, you know. So, sure. so um, you know, so it's, it's uh, definitely tougher when you're older. Um, if you've had a history of chronic stress-related disorders, and, but that doesn't mean it can't be straightened out. As long as you are still menstruating, even if it's sporadic, if you're producing eggs, uh, you know, and then they're able to get fertilized. Uh, that's a good thing. That's that's how you get pregnant. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you know, it has to attach. You know, the, the egg has to attach properly. And there, so there can be complications as you get older. But um, if we can get you really healthy, get the entire body working again, hormones, the immune system, digestion, detoxification systems then reproduction becomes much easier for the body. And uh, menstrual cycles can return to normal. So when you've had quite a few normal menstrual cycles, on time, no heavy bleeding, just things sailing along pretty smoothly, you know, I would say let that go six, nine, or even 12 months, you know, and you're really healthy. I mean, your energy's where it's supposed to be. Your sleep is really good. You got stress down to a very easily manageable level. Now that would be a good time to try to get pregnant, don't you think? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah by all means. Yeah. You got a good state yeah, so homeostasis and uh, mental and mentally and physically and that's gonna help help everything. Everything's gonna be a lot better. Um, so yeah. so I like your comment about as long as so you're so if the if there's a, a good menstrual cycle going for a number of months and that's another another area that as as I've, you know, gotten, I'm, I don't necessarily deal with a lot. I'm personally, I deal more with with males, uh, with wellness coaching. But uh, it's since there's such an area, such a huge opening, we need more people like you over here, <laughs> Reed. Um, so, with for example, if you were dealing with someone who was having polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, would that that would would that be a, a mark, an indication that you would probably want to treat that before trying to get pregnant? Well, again, you know, I don't diagnose or treat any specific sure. condition, and you know, and PCOS is a problem, uh, especially for women with blood sugar problems, and uh, usually their testosterone's a little high. So we have a blood sugar imbalance, we have a hormone imbalance. So when you just correct those things, then the person's more likely to be again healthier able to conceive, every, able to carry a bot, uh, infant or you know fetus to full term, and that's what we want. So when there are those kind of circumstances, always we want to get the person checked out by a physician, make sure that uh, any cysts or don't go cancerous, and you know there's lots of sort of ways it could go south, 
you know, and so that's where physicians come in very handy. They can do CT scans. They can, you know, keep an eye on things to make sure that there isn't something life-threatening um, while that person does all of the behavior, natural lifestyle things, the diet, the rest, the exercise, the stress reduction. And, you know, taking supplements is very helpful. I don't own a supplement company. I don't care if people buy things or where they buy them, but uh, the, I know a few things about supplements and they can be very, very important uh, simply because food quality is, is pretty poor, especially here in the U.S. Uh, but insofar as be, being able to help people, we work all over the world because, uh, you know, of the Internet and email. And as long as you can get uh, mail sent to you, you can take test kits, you can submit them to the lab through the mail. And then we can get the results, and we can help people that way, as you well know. Sure. Well, that you know, let's let's touch on that because a lot of people aren't aware of that. So let's just say hypothetically um, that you had a you know someone in Europe who wanted to deal with you know wanted to to consult with you, and uh, what would generally be the step the process step by step? Well, first of all, I have trained people in Europe uh, who can do this work. And uh, they're certified by me. We call it FDN, Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Practitioners. And so uh, it's actually pretty easy to find them. And then, of course, here in the States, I have my own staff who work for me, and we, we take on clients. So there's different ways you can do FDN. Again, that's Functional Diagnostic Nutrition. You can go to functionaldiagnosticnutrition.com and look us up and look up a local practitioner perhaps, uh, but you know, figure out if that's something you want to do. And um, uh, so it's, it's just not that difficult to find someone to work with, first of all, then you have to do the work. So what we are, you could look at us as more or less health detectives. We don't diagnose or treat specific condition, and most of us are not physicians, although I've trained some physicians as well. Uh, we really avoid the diagnosis treatment model. In other words, here's something specific to work with. We can work on everything in the body, every cell, every organ, every system and tissue, uh, non-specifically. So you just get healthier. There's actually a name for it in medicine. It, it's being called cellular medicine, just turning the body around. Uh, you mentioned homeostasis. Well, homeostasis is the a property of an organism to heal itself, actually. And so we believe very much that there's an innate intelligence in every cell. You don't have to teach a cell what its job is, do you? No. You just uh, feed it properly, uh, you know, keep the bad stuff away, and the body does have a tendency to turn itself around. Well, that tendency is what we get to work with. And so we coach that up. We can provide a person, a body, a cell, an organ, a system with the things that coach up that tendency to be healthy while we coach down and remove the things that work against the body and cells and organs yeah fascinating. and they're not it's, that hard. Yeah. it's it's uh it's cr it's crazy that this is um that we don't hear more about this although i think you know health health and wellness is going in that direction so you know hats off to you for what you're doing and uh um uh, if I could now, just to go back to fertility on a one other, uh, I have a, yep. I have some notes here that uh, Rachel had mentioned, another condition, uh, and, and once again we're not dealing, we're not diagnosing, um, but as a marker or um, if you saw a, if you had a woman for example who was showing symptoms of endometriosis for example, um, any suggestions on what you might do to to help her then get you know get into a a better better condition yeah of course you know I mean I have to keep repeating that uh, we don't treat that specifically but we find it's amazing what happens when you start with the behavior the lifestyle and uh, we do use supplements but we use the testing to see what's going on with the hormones immune system and other systems and endometriosis is basically an estrogen dominant uh, situation. So women with endometriosis also develop a lot of fibroids 
And then, of course, if they have that going on in their uteruses, they could have a lot of other estrogen dominant effects, you know, so they have tender breasts, they have excess weight, they have problems. And so we look at all of that and then give, run our labs. And these, by the way, are labs, as you well know, that most physicians just aren't running. Sure. Um, sure. You know, the, in, the, in the alternative and complementary field, some of the new discoveries will take 15 to 20 years before they become part of mainstream medicine. So there are labs available now, I mean, in other words, blood tests or urine tests or saliva tests or stu- things that can be used to identify opportunities that will not be used by modern medicine for 20 years. Yeah. That's just the way that whole system works. And so, you know, I'm not bound by that. Um, I can find the newest, latest, greatest thing and try it out. Uh, we have a research and development department where we'll run these new labs, see if they're useful, and then see how they could be applied to this kind of practice. And so, um, whether it's endometriosis or name another problem, it really doesn't matter. Uh, we're probably aware of some lab that would tell us something about what's really the problem. Sure. You know, or what's contributing to the problem and you know that may take some sorting out there could be multi uh, factorial you know uh, underlying causes um but there is a way if you're willing to follow the behavior so again people hire us as their health detectives we can you know straighten things out um the real issue becomes are they willing is the client willing to invest the you know resources into it and do, devote themselves, make it a priority in their lives to get healthy in that way. Yeah, this, this comes to mind. Um, I, uh, I had, a real, had an interesting talk um, a, month, months, a few months back with uh, a, a former Navy SEAL doctor uh, who's in, in your area, Kirk Parsley is his name, and uh, he was, uh, had been dealing with some, some sleep disorder issues and uh, was was amazed him, amazed himself that he had never had any training on the fact that the huge amount of hormonal changes that occur when we're sleep deprived, and uh, he's now sort of you know sort of gone in that that's really been one of his area, become his area of specialty perhaps, but uh, is so would sleep be something that you that you would uh, deal I guess also uh, work with? Absolutely, you know it's a huge component. I've tried to make the way that we work really simple to understand, and which is not easy because some of what's going on in the body is actually very, very complex. Uh, but the the lifestyle and behavior we've put into a we call it D R E S S. So that spells dress, diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplements. So diet's critical. You mentioned sleep, which falls under rest. Now, rest is absolutely required. Um, If you're not properly sleeping, you will throw your hormones off, not to mention the fact that you'll be tired the next day and your mental clarity won't be there. And so then you probably don't feel like exercising. Well, diet, rest, exercise is huge. So if you're not sleeping, you're not exercising, all of that just contributes to the chaos in the body. I actually have termed that metabolic chaos, you know, uh, all these stressors, including lack of sleep and poor diets and lack of exercise and all the other stressors that we are subject to, uh, they c- all contribute to metabolic chaos, to the body not working right. It just And it starts with just getting out of balance, little loss of homeostasis, and it cascades from there. So there's a huge cascade effect. And uh, what results at the other end, let's say, what results downstream is the symptoms. And so if all you ever do is chase symptoms, you're not going upstream and looking for the underlying causes and you won't get to what the true stressors really are. So that's how we work. Actually, that's it. Yeah, that's a fact. I love that analogy. It's, it's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, with your permission, I'm going to, I'm going to try to remember that and use it. I have to translate it into Spanish though. (laughs) Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, that's that's that'll be my that'll be my challenge for tomorrow morning when I'm good and awake first thing in the morning. So, so Reed, going back to fertility, can let's can we talk a little bit about nutrition? Um, uh, I 
would you do you find much variation with um, as far as your nutritional recommendations? Is this something you would firstly firstly be testing people, um, or would you do you have a kind of a general blueprint that uh, for for nutrition? Well, yeah, I mentioned diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation. Nutrition needs to be handled. Diet, your daily diet, what you eat for breakfast, snacks, lunch, dinner, before bed, whatever it is, diet is critical. And diet actually crosses over with, with stress reduction because some diets are very stressful. If you are eating too much sugar, for instance, and your blood sugar is going up and down, that's very stressful on the body. And... Um, if you're eating foods that you have sensitivities to, that's very stressful on the body. So you have to eat what we call it according to your metabolic type. So your genetic type. So I recommend basically an ancestral diet. So if you can figure out what your ancestors were eating, that's probably a pretty good diet. And if you can avoid a lot of the uh, the pitfalls of the modern American diet. They call it here the standard American diet. Sad. It spells sad, <laughs> which is a very sad diet indeed. You know, if you're eating a lot of processed foods and uh, treated uh, everything, then um, you know that's pretty sad, and that will contribute to poor health. So obviously, diet is a huge factor. And again, it doesn't matter what your health goals are. If they're uh, pre if you want to get pregnant. You have to eat right, and you have to go to bed and get a good night's sleep, and you have to exercise your body, you have to reduce stress in every way that it can be identified. And with the labs, we can identify the food sensitivities, the parasites, bacteria, funguses, viruses. We have all of these uh, uh, environmental toxins, and they help break the body down. So when you straighten that out uh, and start reducing the stressors and start, again, building up that innate uh, you, you know, that's an amazing process. And we don't guarantee anything, but I think there's very reasonable expectations. And so that's what we go on. Yeah, that's fascinating stuff. So with regards to metabolic typing, I know we, it's part, you know, basically you want, would like to identify what your ancestors ate. But when you have a, if you have someone who has a variety of ancestors, you know, like, for example, in my case, we've got, um, you know, some Irish mixed in with uh, with a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of French, so it's we're kind of all over the board. So what would you with a with a person who's sort of a mixed breed, <laughs> like myself? What would you uh, how would you how would you go about the Would you do a just by the process of elimination, or would you any other suggestions? No, it, that's the beauty of the metabolic typing system that I use and it's for exactly that reason that you need a system because we don't know what our ancestral diets were or they were mixed sure. and so there sure. is a there is a test that you can take that looks at uh, physical characteristics even mental emotional characteristic dietary habits and traits and things like that and it kind of categorizes you into uh, your you know, basic, uh, we could call it protein type or carbohydrate type. It goes much deeper than that, and time will not allow the details. Sure. But I could tell you physiologically, sure. physiologically, what would make you a protein type. That would be a fast oxidizer, for instance, like an Eskimo. You know, you are you just burn fuel so quickly on a cellular level that you need slow-burning fuel like protein and fat. So the people that need protein and fat in a high percentage – and you might just call them protein types, but there's a reason for that, and it is genetic, and, it, and that's what their ancestral diets were based on, was slow-burning fuel because they have fast-burning cells, if you will. That's a simplistic way to look at it. Now, there are uh, tribes in South America and all over the world, actually, that are very uh, slow oxidizers. They burn fuel in a city level very slowly, mm -hmm. so you wouldn't want to put uh, slow-burning fuel on that fire, you would want to allow for fast burning fuel, like carbohydrates do burn more quickly, if you will. These are simplistic terms, sure. but that's kind of sure. how it works. And so, 
you might be mixed somewhere in the middle. The bottom line is that once you figure out your general category, you can adjust that with a little fine tuning. And it turns out that when you eat a meal that is designed for you, that is matched up with you in that way, you should have very high energy, you should have good mental clarity, and you should have a sense of satiation that is uh, no cravings, no hungry feelings. Your food should actually satisfy you produce a good, strong, solid energy, including mental clarity and a sense of well-being that actually contributes to your happiness. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a, that's that's a, a great point. It's such, uh, so many of us don't have that, especially when we're eating processed foods, fast foods, things that, uh, that have uh, lots of chemicals that we oftentimes don't even, can't even pronounce. And uh, um, how would, uh, if, if we could connect the dots a little bit, how would uh, how how important is our nutrition to our hormones? Oh well, it's like anything else. Nutrition is the basis for health on every level, whether it's your hormones or your immune system or or whatever it is. Uh, it starts with good quality foods and good digestion and good assimilation of those nutrients. We need vitamins, minerals phytonutrients, essential fatty acids, trace minerals, you know, all these kinds of things. And our body needs to be able to break them down in order to have good hormone levels. And so, you know, it's there's not one thing in your body that's disconnected from anything else. And as you well know, that's the problem with modern medicine is it disconnects things. Yes. You know, you yes. they have a person for this organ and a person for this organ and a person for this system – and uh, the body just doesn't work that way, um, you know. So it's it's uh, food. Food is critical, and uh, that's often where we start. Good food, good hydration, and then of course uh, assimilation of the food. It has to get into the body properly, and it's that's not happening. And then of course elimination. Uh, you have to be able to uh, just use up the good part of the food and eliminate what's no longer of any use, you know, get, get the moisture out of it and, and go to the bathroom on a regular basis. <laughs> sure. You know, and so sure. many people just, just aren't even eliminating properly. They have, they don't have good, uh, food, you know, aren't not eating the right foods. They're not hydrated. They're not assimilating the food and they're not eliminating the waste properly. And uh, waste elimination is beyond just pooping. You know, it's uh, about, um, detoxifying through the liver, through the colon, through the lymph system, through the lungs, uh, kidneys, and all these things. So it's, it's uh, again, it's very complex, but I've spent over 15 years studying it as a layperson, trying to really understand what's going on, and then try, you know, systematizing that so that it can be taught to others. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Fascinating. It uh, speaking of, of, we haven't talked much about about detoxification. Um, one soundbite that I was that I had ran across was that really we could to understand detoxification. We have you know really three. There's three ways we detoxify: two in the bathroom, and one would be sweating. Uh, would you add, what would would you uh, would you agree with that? Um, that's that's our main pathways, right? And and how many of us don't sweat? And, uh, and um, on, on a regular basis. Well, you know, you, I didn't mention the skin. It's a big detoxification organ, and uh, perspiration is a way to detoxify our bodies. Elimination through the bowels is another way, of course, um, but it pretty much starts with the liver. The liver detoxifies or begins a detoxification process. Um, the kidneys are another. Um, the colon, as we just said, uh, the skin, of course, but even your lungs detoxify your body. They outgas uh, noxious and toxic uh, gases, which okay. are chemicals in a way. Breath so, the fourth. Well, there's that. There's also the lymph system. Now, the lymph is very interesting because it's all throughout the body and it collects toxins out of the bloodstream. And so, you know, there's an interchange there where it goes back into the bloodstream and through the liver but the lymph is very important and it has to be exercised to move you know you have to move lymph uh, around the body 
and it has no circulation system of its own. In other words, there's no pump. You know, the blood, you can lay down and be asleep, and the blood is pumping through your body. So you're detox, and it's pumping through the liver. It's going through the kidneys on its own. It has its own uh, hydraulics, if you will. Right. But the lymph right. system does not. And so you have to move the body to properly detoxify the body. That's why these things all fit together. And you can't just separate one thing. Like, you know, you could say, well, I'm going to do a liver cleanse, but everything is involved. Uh, the, the lymph, the kidneys, obviously, the, the colon, and so on. So, um, again, I try not to, to separate things too much. Although liver flushes are good. Uh, you better have the other systems and organs uh, prepared to handle the onslaught of toxins that could be released. Chris. Great point. So so if we could maybe change gears and, and just touch on supplementation for if you know for fertility and uh, and uh, and also with detoxification in general. And I know once again you would you would probably be ideally be looking at lab results beforehand to look at some whatever symptoms were presented, um, but uh, any any general general uh, ideas or principles of supplementation? Well, yes, um, you know my general uh, statement about that would be that supplements are really important. For one thing, soils are depleted, and so all of the uh, minerals and nutrients have been sort of uh, used up by previous crops. You know and um, most of the time, farmers today, modern farmers today, anyway, in uh, big agricultural endeavors, are more interested in food growing quickly than they are it being nutritious. And so, uh, it's a tough thing to get enough nutrition out of your f food. So you'll need to. Uh, that's why they call it supplementing. Uh, you're really just substituting. You know the. Uh, the pills or capsules or liquids or whatever kind of supplements you're using um, for, so you're substituting. So that's an important thing. But also supplements, you know, these uh, things you might use out of a, out of a bottle or what have you um, can be used to stimulate. So they can stimulate organs. They can uh, push them a little bit and that might not be a bad thing. You might want to stimulate your immune system, for instance, if you're uh, feeling under the weather, if you're being exposed to a lot of uh, viruses or things like that. During, during flu season, for instance, um, you could take some immune boosters. So you can use supplements to uh, support, as I said, or substitute um, and to stimulate. And I just said support. Well, yeah, you can su support specific organs. There are uh, herbs and and uh, other nutrients that can be used to support a good uh, endocrine system. You know the adrenal glands, for instance. Um, we often might use uh, glandular products um, for you know like desiccated or dried uh, adrenal gland. Um, the same thing can be true for the thyroid or for the ovaries or for uh, the testes. Even um, using sub. Uh, Nutrients known to support those organs can be very, very helpful. Fascinating, Inter very interesting stuff. That's uh, there's so much we could go into here, but I'm trying. I want to be respectful of your time. How are you? How are you doing time-wise? Are you? Uh, you know, I. It, how much time do you need? I mean, we we can. Could we go maybe on another a little ten bit. minutes or so? Is that uh, would that be? That's yeah. Uh, ten minutes is good. Great. Okay. Let's let's um, let's touch base on. Um, uh, we I guess we've. Is there anything else on fertility as far as general principles that you would that you could add to? I know we've covered a lot of the basis. Well, yeah, we just sort of picked on the women there, especially the older women who seem to be having the issues. Of course, you also mentioned PCOS, which is more in uh, younger women. Actually, we're finding a lot of women. Uh, 19, 20, 21 years old with polycystic ovarian syndrome, which again, is a syndrome. There's a bunch of factors in place, usually very poor blood sugar levels along with higher testosterone, which happens for various reasons. Uh, and so they end up with cysts on their ovaries and this can prevent uh, pregnancy from happening. And so, you know, we're, we're only able to do that in a, brief interview like this 
But those are those are good things to, to think about. That remember, almost any problem uh, can be reduced, if not eliminated, through the proper diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplements. Now, most people know about diet, rest, and exercise, or think they do. Um, yet they come to us on their diets, on their uh, rest and exercise programs, mostly diet and exercise, and they think that's all they need to do. Right. Well, there's a lot more to being healthy than diet and exercise. Again, the sleep and rest, but the stress reduction and supplements are huge. Most of it is in the area around stress reduction. So, again, if you can uh, eliminate the environmental toxins and you can uh, handle the pathological things, the viruses, the uh, bacterial overgrowth, yeast is a big problem, uh, parasites, of course, and you start filtering these things out, removing them, uh, and repairing the damage that they've done. And then you'll be amazed at how healthy you can get. And, and all of those things contribute to, uh, I have used the word metabolic chaos, which is a very great term. Uh, and, um, and again, the damage to how well you break down and absorb food, it's, it's very critical. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, I love that term, metabolic chaos. It is. Uh, it is a. It's wonderful and it's very uh, fitting for, for the times we're living in. Uh, so, Reed, if it, is there any tips um, in the? You know, we we have folk. We've talked more about a lot about females and fertility, but on you know on occasion you might have. Uh, of course, us guys have to do our part. Any any tips for guys out there who are maybe they're you know they're uh, they're supporting their their uh, their wife or significant other to get as healthy as possible. But what about us guys? What would what any any sound bites for us? Well, yeah, of course. Um, the principles are the same whether you're male or female. And uh, with men, I do notice that they don't pay attention enough. So the one thing about men is they always make sure their cars are running great. But you know, if it's their body, <laughs> if they get it, if they get an ache or pain, you know, they tend to ignore it. And so that's because we're tough guys and we get taught not to cry and ignore pain. And sure, I don't cry and I, I pretty much could ignore pain. But I've learned that that's not always a wise thing to do. Women live longer, Dan, for one reason. It's not thing to do with their gender. It has to do with paying more attention to your body. And so women live in the United States uh, five, six years longer than men. And that's because they... Again, they just pay attention. So men need to pay attention to things that are, uh, if you're symptomatic, uh, that's a sign something's wrong. Now, you have two choices. You can just treat the symptom or you can find out what's really wrong. And if you, if you just want to treat the symptom, you could equate that to, let's say, the red light comes on the dashboard of your car. Right. So if you're driving a car and the red light comes on, you know, you don't just put a piece of tape over it and cover the red light. You know, you would go and find out what's wrong. And so these uh, symptoms that you're having, if it's fatigue or allergies, you know, sensitivity to something, if it's headaches um, and, and poor sleep, you can't sleep, you wake up too early, you know, all of these different things, those are signs. They're like that red light that something's wrong. And so if you just take a pill uh, and treat only the symptom, you're most likely ignoring the underlying cause or condition. And it will continue to get worse. Yeah. And so um, pay attention to the signs and signals that something's wrong and try to find out what's what's really wrong. That's what I would recommend if if you wanted to. That's the short, short answer, sure, believe it or not. Sure, thank you. Thank you. We'll read one last question, and then we'll wrap things up here. Um, this is, I think we've covered fertility very well. Um, uh, one of the, one issue that I'm seeing in Spain uh, separate from that is uh, uh, there's a lot, a very high amount of, Spaniards eat a lot of, a lot of seafood and fish. And as we all know, there's more and more contamination with our, in our waters, and uh, especially with mercury, things like that. Any, any general tips that you might give people who are maybe noticing, hey, that, you know, on the one hand, the, the the standard recommendation is eat more fish. We need our we meet, we need those fatty acids, but we also need to be conscious of the the heavy metals and things like that. Um, any anything you could you could share with us on on that area? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. And as a fish lover, I love fish. Sure, but I, <laughs> yeah, and but I've also had my uh, mercury checked, and so there is. The, this is quite a lesson, and we don't have time for it now. But there's um, a way that your body you can see if you've got too much mercury, and you need to cut back on the fish a little bit, or at least the types of fish that you eat. Now, um, the smaller fish have not been around long enough to absorb a lot of mercury. So your sardines and your small fish, and also cold, cold water fish tend to have less mercury in them. So if it's seafood and fish and you're worried about mercury, you can get tested for it and see if that's a problem for you. And then, of course, you can detoxify that. It takes some time. Uh, you, you know, one of the products that I use myself is called liposomal glutathione. Right. So if you get put that up in text, glutathione is very important. Uh, there's a liposomal that actually you squirt on your tongue five shots every morning, five shots before bed, and you, it's going to go in. It's going to help your liver to detoxify. So um, that's just one little. I mean, there's so many different uh, things sure. involved in that. But you know, there's you can cut back a little bit on your fish if you have a problem, and then uh, eat more of the kinds of fish that don't have a lot of uh, mercury in them. And, um, and, and it really is a, an issue because like, I love sushi. I love fish. It's, it's otherwise, we used to call it brain food when I was growing up. It's very high in protein. It's, it really should be a good quality thing that you should be able to eat a lot of. But if you have that, and let's say you have also a combination of of uh, mercury fillings that are also detoxifying into your body. You know, the, it's the more the combination of the overall assault that we and burden that the body has. So we have this idea of heavy metal burden uh, that can be difficult to detoxify. So I think proper testing and detoxification processes are a good thing to look into if you eat a lot of fish. Right. Uh, right. I'm I've been seeing some good information with maybe with NAC, also looking at using inositalcysteine or NAC, uh, alpha lipoic acid, and you yeah. know, higher amounts of vitamin C. I guess it's all related to the glutathion. glutathion uh, I think I'm butchering that pronunciation. Um, but, we know it's. Uh, but anyway, that's wonderful stuff. I think we'll we sh we should probably wrap things up here, and I'm sure we could we could go into that perhaps in a future a future interview. Uh, Maybe next okay. uh, next uh, next uh, later later this year or next year or something. If that would be wonderful. Um, now, for people out there, Reed, who are uh, who listened to this and they thought, "Wow, I'd love to uh, to find out more about uh, about your about what your work and what you're doing." What's the best place that people can find you and and your and your stuff? Well, thanks very much, Dan. It's been a real pleasure to be here. And if people want to get more information about what I do and what I teach. They would go to functionaldiagnosticnutrition.com, and that's your one-stop shop right there for uh, either hiring a health detective or for those practitioners out there becoming a health detective. So functionaldiagnosticnutrition.com, and I really appreciate you having me on, Dan. I'd be happy to come back and talk about any other area you want in the future. Hey, thank you so much. You're a, a wealth of information, and uh, congratulations on, on all your work so far, and uh, glad you switched over from the law career. My father is an, is an attorney, 82-year-old uh, yeah. attorney. He's still, he's still in, the, uh, in the trenches and can't get away from it, so good for you for, for doing something, for doing what you're doing. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Take care. You too. Hey, before you go, three quick things. Uh, first, if you like this video, please share it. Second, if you'd like to empower yourself on a regular basis, check out all the uh, free information we have over at metabolicmotivation.com. And thirdly, if you'd like to fast track your own progress so you can look better, feel better, and perform better, we are now offering free 15-minute uh, phone consults to answer your biggest question. And uh, all you have to do is go to metabolicmotivation.com and uh, just click on the Contact Us button. So that's all for now. Thanks again and uh, talk to you soon.